GoAccess is an open source real-time web log analyzer and interactive viewer that runs in terminals of Unix systems through your browser. This is actually kind of neat. So I've used this for a little while and I uh, was doing a security video and people had had some questions. Hey, what's that tool you use? And I left the link in that uh, video, but I figured I'd talk a little bit about it. So it is open source, it runs in a terminal, and it's very full featured for doing log analysis. Now, a few people asked me already if it will do log analysis outside of web server logs. A little bit. Um, it does Apache, Nginx, Amazon, Elastic Load, Balancing, CloudFront. And I'm sure if you jump in their forums, there are ways you can uh, use it to analyze other things. It is, you know, analyzing standard kind of uh, log formats. It has a lot of features. And it's really tiny, really lightweight. Matter of fact, it doesn't have any dependencies except for uh, and curses. So when you run this from a terminal or you want to run an input, there's not a lot to load. You just load the GoAxis um, binaries and run it and output it. And that's it. So let me show you real quick how it works. So from the command line, it's pretty simple. It's GoAxis minus F and then location of the files. Uh, this is my Discord server that runs my forums. It's running a uh, Ubuntu server. And the GoAxis is uh, looking for the Docker container, which is under discourse, shared, standalone, log bar, blah, 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 uh, right here. So we're going to go ahead and go access SF to that. Wants to know the log format. And this is where we're going to get some errors. And let me show you a little bit about this. So the tricky part about go access can be that you have to do some formatting on there. So what I've done is there's more than one way to do this. You can actually create a file in Etsy and put these parameters in, but you have to look at the log formats and make the determination of the log formats of how, uh, for example, Nginx uh, is outputting these and then matching this in. And I'll leave um, this log format, I think I can put this inside of the description of the video because this was a little bit tricky and my friend Phil had helped me out with this because it has not the discourse sp server specifically used a weird format, but when I run this on my other standard Apache servers, the default format for Apache is fine. Discourse, when they spun this into the Docker, used a couple custom parameters and did things differently in their log files. So you kind of have to go through the log files, look at it, and then create a go access on there. I just wanted to comment on that. So if you want to parse this for other things, it is documented. You just have to get these parameters on there. And what these parameters are is the different uh, header information and log information of what you want it to parse and what arrangement you want it to go into. And for example, when you can see some of these are uh, where you say percent caret there, that's just throwing away certain data because it's not data we need for the go access. Then we have the date format and it's, uh, you know, when you're doing day, month, year, year, month, day, whichever one those are, you have to get that formatted and then the time format, and then we have it. Now, if you didn't notice, this is just wrapped along on there for different lines. Also, I wanted to include two days. This has a daily log rotate. So go access just F, var log, discourse shared, standalone, var log, nginx, access log, and then same one again, dot one, because that's, we have it set for when the log rotation uh, dot one will be the next log rotation for each day that it runs. So now we're take, telling Go Access to take both of these files, assemble them together using this log format, using this date format, using this time format. Pretty straightforward. Exit out, and this is the result when you run it. It takes a second to run to parse all this, and then we start getting the data we're looking for. And this is all in real time. So if you're watching the total requests uh, go up, I'm gonna do this, bring this over, and refresh the page a couple times for this. And here comes all the total requests going up each time I hit this. So you're watching the numbers up in these corners keep going up. So this is all real time. You can look at what exactly is happening on your server. You can watch the uh, poll information and start generating all the requests. And I'm not gonna scroll up and down because I'm not gonna show all the IP addresses uh, that it shows in here, but you kind of get the idea. All these are being updated and I can just uh, be in here and mouse arrow up and down a little bit. We'll get to the IP address part, uh, but you can kind of see how I can go up and down. You can expand. It's got a help file in here. So all of this from the command line driven, you can start grabbing and putting together statistics, which is just really slick that you can do that. And if you notice at the top here, uh, overall analyze requests, January 12th and January 13th. So uh, today and yesterday, um, and then it's telling me the log sources, those two files that we said right here. So definitely uh, 
Really handy tool for this. And let me show you what it looks like in report. And I have a report that I sanitize for IP addresses um, that I can actually show you what's going on in our Discord server and some of the stats that I look at. So when you look at the dashboard, this is uh, when you run a report. Now to run this report, instead of outputting to the terminal, you just add, and I'll show you real quick on the uh, pieces here. We go over here to the man page, examples. When you do the output, you actually just say go access log dash o report.html. And when I add that, it produced a report.html, static one-time file. I'm not doing the, if you add real time, it'll constantly push data to that HTML file. Um, and it has its own little web server it can set up, well, kind of like a web server where you can pull that data directly from your server. I just pulled the file over. If you look at the top here, it's not actually on the server. I copied the file over through um, SSH and just viewing it right here. But this gives you an idea, hits, browser hits. I've already removed the IP addresses from here. Um, one of the things I thought was interesting when I look at some of the unique visitors that are hitting my forums, uh, browsers, time distribution, operating system, there we go, is uh, a lot more, a lot of Linux users. So we're only 63% of the people visiting my forums are using Windows and 63% uh, and then 23% of you running Linux, uh, Mac, 5%, Android, unknown 2% people masking what they're even doing, a Chrome OS, 0.08%. Um, so not many Chromebook users at least showing up in here. Unix-like and Darwin. So it's, like I said, it gives me a lot of interesting stats. This is only for two days worth of stats that I pulled in here. It's definitely a really slick utility for doing this. I, I don't really use the report HTML that much that they do, um, but I think it's novel they have it. Mostly I'll pull in the terminal, grab a log file, kind of look at it. And I'm not, I'm using it in the forums as an example, um, but in my security example, I obviously I used it because I look at when, why is someone hitting and what are they doing on one of my, uh, servers, whether that be my Invoice Ninja server or my Screen Connect server, which I used in my security example, someone was just constantly refreshing a page and pulling a weird amount of bandwidth, uh, but not actually doing any requests or actions like they are here, where they're actually you know browsing through or trying to even click on anything. They're just pulling the page um, repetitively in a dial service manner, and it's one of those things. It very quickly from the terminal, you're like, "Yep, that IP is the problem IP." and I showed in that in another video. But like I said, it's a great utility. Um, it's free, obviously. It's open source. Do what you please with it. A lot of examples in their outputs. I mean, there's a lot of flexibility this has on different things you can do, which is great. Um, have at it. Go and play with it. And go ahead and go on their website where they have uh, an entire real-time demo of what it looks like You know, running the latest version, um, at, especially because this is a lot more hits than I get. So um, go ahead. Go access.io. I'll leave uh, links in the description. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit the thumbs up. If you want to see more content from my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and the bell icon and hopefully YouTube will send you a notice. If you're interested in contracting Lawrence Systems for any type of IT services work or consulting work, go ahead and head over to lawrencesystems.com and fill out our contact and get in touch with us. If you would like to help the channel out in other ways, you can use our affiliate links below in the description, or we have a link directly to our Lawrence Systems page where we have a list of different affiliate offers, and it's very appreciated if you use any of those for signing up any of the services, and many of them offer you discounts. If you want to head over to our forums, there'll be a link in the description for our forums, uh, wherever they may be, because we've been looking at different forum platforms, but they'll always be relevantly linked right there. All right, once again, thanks. Leave some feedback and comments below on this video. If you loved it, if you hated it, I try to reply to everyone, the people who hate and the people who love them. So thank you very much and see you next time.